Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, to thank LSE Urban Age for making it possible for us to be here today. I want to give a perspective of an African urban authority, an urban center, different perhaps from what we have been looking at. And I want to take the example from Kampala, where the challenges, the issues are basically the same or similar to a lot of developing countries uh, in their urban settings. Um, Kampala transformational journey, I'm going to run, this through, uh, run through this very fast. Our population is as shown, 4 million during the day, that means people commuting in. Uh, urban population growth, 5.2%. We contribute 60% of the city's GDP and the population is projected to grow to 10 million in the city by 2040. Um, the transformation journey, I just want to emphasize that if we're going to transform urban centers, cities, particularly in developing uh, countries, we've got to look at why they are the way that they are. And most of the times you'll find that it's to do with the legislation, the policies, the politics, and cultural and social issues that affect everything else in these urban centers. So for Kampala uh, 2010, a new law was passed that brought into place uh, Kampala Capital City Authority. That means we moved from being a local government to a central government cooperative, a uh, central government corporate entity running the city. Uh, we have been working on a lot of things. Before we came in for the last so many decades since independence, there was a lot of unplanned and uncontrolled settlements, growing slums, juxtaposed with urban affluence. These are pictures from then uh, on the streets of Kampala, breakdown of infrastructure, very, very poor service delivery, very, very high levels of corruption, total financial breakdown. The revenue was very poor, and the institution had basically collapsed, both in reputation and in services. So for the last five years, we've been working on different um, aspects of restructuring the city, uh, began by restructuring the organization, setting up a new organization. I had the unenviable task of firing over 1,500 staff and uh, we and hiring fresh, fresh people that had a different mindset, a different, uh, a different skill set. And, but in our setting, it was quite, quite colorful. Uh, because everybody is connected to someone else and then people get quite, quite, um, quite loud sometimes, depending on who they, they are, where they are coming from. We've done roads, we've done uh, street lights, we have um, been working on urban planning, try to streamline the city, we'll cr increased waste management, we are promoting the use of renewable energy, starting with the city, uh, we're installing solar lighting, and also planting trees in different parts of the city. We are building hospitals because we provide for the health um, services in the city. And these are some of the things that we're doing, ambulances, uh, garbage trucks, increased waste collection. We're now opening up a new landfill where we want to do recycling and um, uh, uh, generation of bioenergy and also increasing sanitation improving sanitation in different parts of the city. We run um, 80, 87 primary schools for low-income families. So we've been building classrooms and equipping them and renovating them, uh, providing education for these children who would otherwise have no chance. Also to provide for workspaces, we build markets, we are also helping young people start businesses by giving them startup capital and also encouraging urban farming through greenhouses, um, small scale um, agriculture projects, backyard farming, uh, aquaculture, rearing pigs and chicken and things like that that people can do to improve their incomes but also improve their household nutrition levels. We've done all this, but it's just a fraction of what the population in the city needs. We, we have been um, 
able to restore the institutional credibility and imp improved efficiency, that means people have confidence, institutions now have the confidence to deal with us because we are credible and we are accountable. We have increased revenue collection by 170% simply by cutting out all the revenue leakages and making our revenue collection electronic away from the manual where people would sort of help themselves to the city revenue. And we've also got very um, efficient online services. Um, again, Employment Services Bureau um, recognitions that we've received. But going forward, even with the achievements that we've been able to make in the last five years, we're still faced with a lot of challenges. Yesterday I mentioned one of the problems, the main problems we have is the different land holdings in the city. So we're limited. We have like five different land holdings and each one very unique in itself. Government has not yet come up with a policy to bring all these holdings under one, uh, one system. And land is a very, very sensitive issue. So we would believe that if the um, Habitat 3 engagement looks at some of the issues that some urban centers are grappling with, perhaps in the legislation, perhaps in the policies, perhaps in the politics, we'd be able to get real solutions that would be able to address um, the real problems that we have to deal with, which may not be problems in the West, but problems for many of us in the developing countries. That is um, addressing the leg legislative regimes that support urbanization, uh, reinforcing urban planning as, as a condition, perhaps to some of the funding that comes to us. Uh, innovative financing mechanisms we can afford, which we can manage and also um, efforts to address climate change in the cities, but addressing the real issues. Why is there a climate, why are there climate change challenges in the city? For example, in Uganda, a lot of the people depend on wood fuel for cooking. Now, unless we give them viable, affordable alternatives to cooking fuel, they are still going to de deplete our forest reserves by using firewood and charcoal for cooking. Uh, the other ones, we need to establish efficient public transport system. Right now, we do not have a public transport system. Everybody sort of manages through um, commuter, small commuter buses, motorcycles, and private, which is a nightmare uh, in terms of controlling um, congestion in the city. So these are some of the basics that we need to get done. And uh, perhaps insist in some way on urban legislation to promote, as I said, um, um, proper development of these urban centers, um, financial sustainability, and also addressing some of the challenges that we face as developing countries. Um, otherwise, without addressing these real issues, we would not be able to provide real sustainable answers for the developing countries and the developing urban centers. One of the initiatives we've taken as Kampala Capital City Authorities is to bring together African urban centers, uh, leaders of African urban authorities to come up with solutions to the common problems that we have within the limitations of financing and capacity. So we, we set up the um, East, Central and Southern Africa um, Cities Forum, which took place uh, recently, and we're coming together to help one another, benchmark from one another, share capacity, so that we can stretch the limited resources that we have uh, further within ourselves, even as we reach out to um, other partners to help us. We think we can have solutions within ourselves, African cities providing African homegrown solutions within the African settings, and then build on that to reach where our Western brothers and sisters are at this time. And I want to thank you so much for giving me the opportunity.